。マトカが参ります。ご注意ください。Hey friends, what's good? So I feel like I bring this up probably way too much, but if you're a new viewer on this channel and you didn't already know, I used to live in Japan. What I don't talk about very often is my experience actually moving to Japan and the processes I had to go through. I literally knew no one in Japan when I first moved over, and I did the whole moving process all by myself, which looking back is actually pretty impressive because my Japanese was pretty non existent to be honest. And I've had friends and viewers ask me about my experience and moving to Japan. And just about moving to a foreign country in general. And while it was worthwhile for me, it was not an easy process. So I wanted to make a video to help people understand the process that you have to go through if you want to move to Japan. This is a beginner's guide to moving to Japan. The first thing you need to think about is how long do you want to live in Japan and what are your goals with moving to Japan. Once you decide how long you want to live in Japan, you'll be able to decide what kind of visa you need, whether you want to work or go to school. Or find someone to get married. They're all viable options, but this is really step one in the process that you need to think about before committing to something. After you decide how long you want to stay in Japan, then you'll want to decide what kind of visa that you need. Now, there are multiple types of visas. The most common is a visitor's visa. If you're an American and you go to Japan on a visitor's visa, it lasts up to three months. Now, I really wanted the immersion experience when moving to Japan, so I knew I wanted to stay longer than three months. So I decided to. Apply for a student visa. I personally went through a language school. With language schools, they're a little more flexible. You'll have to find your own housing usually, or they have some housing companies that they work with. However, a lot of the things and processes that you have to do, you're pretty much on your own. The school term lasts from three months up to two years, and after two years, you need to decide whether you want to stay in Japan, take the JLPT, and maybe get a job, or think about returning to your own country. Another option, if you're already going to university, is you can do a study abroad course. Study abroad courses are usually broken down into semesters. So, you can go for one semester or two semesters. Usually, it caps at about a year. You usually don't stay longer than that, but it really depends on the university and the program that you're going through. You can also get a job, which is probably the most popular option. As long as you're working, the visa will be. Pretty much permanent. There are a few conditions though. You'll have to be working full time, and usually you're under whatever rules that the company offers you because they're the one providing the visa, so you kind of have to do what they say. I've also heard stories where companies offer you housing as well, but it's also a way to keep more control over you. Because they have the visa and they're also sponsoring your housing, so they're kind of like keeping you in a bubble a little bit. And the final option would be a working holiday visa. Now, if you're American, you can kind of just skip over this because we don't have this. I don't know why. It's an injustice, but it is what it is. If you have the option of a working holiday visa, there are some things that you need to know. You usually need to be between the ages of 18 and 30. Some places you need to be between 18 and 25. Depending on the country that you're from, there may be a Maximum number of working holiday visas that are issued per year. And if you get the working visa, you're allowed to work while on holiday in order to sustain your holiday, basically. Some requirements are you need a valid passport, good health, reasonable funds. And never have been issued a working visa in the past. It lasts up to 12 months, so I really think it is a good option if you're kind of on the edge of wanting to live in Japan but don't necessarily know yet. It's a great way to test the waters. I kind of wish we had it in America, but we don't. So next, you'll need to choose where you'll live. You'll need to choose your city, which is also kind of dependent on whether you're going to a school or working for an office. Wherever you go to school or work will kind of depend on where you're gonna live. I personally wanted to be in the hustle and bustle of Tokyo, so I found a school in Shibuya. If you want more information about language schools and particularly the language school that I went to and my experiences, I will also link the video I did talking about my language school experience. But after you finalize your city and your work or school, School, then you'll need to find an apartment or room to rent. You do have a few options though. The first one is a share house. Now, share houses usually have cheaper rent because you get a room instead of the 
whole apartment or whole building. Share houses usually consist of either younger people and or foreigners, and the conditions depend on the share house itself. I've heard good and bad stories about living in a share house. I think the best tip about living in a share house is if you're a foreigner especially, they might have better access to English assistance. So if there's something that goes on in the building or in your room, like you need a light bulb change or the water isn't working, you'll be able to get that assistance a lot easier, especially if you only speak English or you only have a limited knowledge of Japanese. The other option is renting an apartment, which is what I personally did. I just love living on my own, living in my own apartment because you have the freedom to go in and out and kind of do whatever you want. You have the privacy when you need it, but on the downside, it can be a lot more expensive, especially in Tokyo. The price for an apartment depends on the location, the age of the building, as well as other factors, like if someone has died in it or not. Usually apartments, or mansions, as they are referred to in Japanese, are owned and operated by Japanese people. So if you're looking for assistance or you need something fixed in your apartment, it might be a lot harder to communicate with them if you don't have a translator or if you're not fluent in Japanese. With apartments too, they always come unfurnished. So you're gonna have to supply all your furniture, your bedding, everything, which can be a lot more costly compared to a furnished apartment or a furnished space that is already taken care of. Also, if you end up moving or end up returning to your country, you're gonna have to take care of getting all the furniture out of your apartment by either renting a moving team or disposal team to get rid of everything. Now, I'm gonna give you a matoka tip. So this is tip number one. There are two ways to actually look for apartments. Number one is online and number two is through an agency. Now, especially if you're looking for an apartment but you're not in Japan, you're gonna have to go with the online option. However, that's not necessarily the best way to do it. It may be easier to go to Japan first and find an apartment while you're there compared to just looking for apartments online. The process will be faster and you can go directly through an agency. Usually tenants want to meet the person moving in and show the space personally before signing any papers or thinking about renting the apartment to that person. There's also this thing where Japanese people might not want to live next to a foreigner. So sometimes it can be a lot harder for a foreigner to find an apartment to live in. And don't get insulted, it's not you. They're just worried about the language barrier and the cultural differences. Granted, it doesn't necessarily make it easier for us to find a place. Next, you need to think about your lifestyle. What is your lifestyle gonna be like when you're living in Japan? Are you the type of person to go clubbing every night and just drink a lot? Are you more into sports and finding social groups in order to hang out with? Are you gonna travel throughout Japan while living in Japan a lot? Are you gonna travel within Japan a lot while you're living there? Are you more inclined to fine dining compared to fast food? Your lifestyle habits will dictate the budget that you need in order to live in Japan. Keep in mind that there's a lot of distractions like arcades, themed cafes, and karaoke. And Japan is a consumer paradise with endless amounts of anime merch, plushies, and clothing as well. If you're looking to be oshare, you should know that all the boys and girls in Shibuya have at least one designer bag. So think about the lifestyle that you want to have in Japan in order to create a monthly budget. The rest of the tips I have are for when you actually arrive to Japan. The first thing you'll want to do right off the bat is memorize the train system. Not necessarily all the lines and all the subways, but you'll need to know where you're going. The train and subway system is gonna be your number one form of transportation while living in Japan. That is, unless you splurge on a bike or take taxis everywhere you go. But then I'm feeling like you're already kind of living an okane mochi lifestyle. My toka tip number two is make sure that you purchase either a Suica or a Pasmo card upon arriving to Japan. These cards are mainly used to store money so you can use it on the train system or the subway, but you can also use these at konbinis, vending machines, and many other places as well. After you get settled in, you're gonna need to visit your nearest ward office in order to register your address and get national health insurance. Keep in mind that if you're only there for three months or less, you don't need to do this part. But if you have a visa for six months or more, you're gonna need to register your address within two weeks of arriving to Japan. You'll also need to do this every time you change addresses in Japan as well. So once you go through the process the first time, make sure to memorize it so that you'll be able to do it again. And although Although they're not super strict about enforcing the rules, I feel like it's better to just get it over with and do it within the two weeks that you arrive to Japan 
just so that you don't get in trouble and you don't need a reason to get kicked out of Japan. So just do it for precaution's sake. Now the process is mainly in Japanese. So if you feel very uncomfortable thinking about that, I would make sure to bring along some help, either a friend who speaks Japanese. I've even seen people Skype their friends or Japanese speaking relatives in order to help with the process. But as someone who arrived in Japan barely speaking any Japanese at all, I was able to do the process all by myself. Granted, it wasn't intuitive at all and it's a pretty long process, but somehow more or less I got through it and I'm sure you guys can too if you just put the energy and the time and the focus into it. Matoka tip number three, and this one's very important, is usually especially if you're living in a larger ward like Shibuya or Shinjuku, there's gonna be a main ward office but there will also be sub ward offices as well. Usually foreigners and English speakers are going to go to the main office because sometimes they do have English support. However, if you're comfortable enough, I highly recommend going to a sub or branch office instead. The wait is gonna be extremely less and while they honestly will only speak Japanese to you, as long as you have enough understanding of Japanese in general, you'll be able to get by. Now, like I said before, if you do get an apartment, you're also gonna need to supply all the furniture. With that being said, you're also gonna need to set up your own internet and other things as well. Now, if you're trying to set up wired internet in your apartment, it's gonna take a while just because the internet companies are a little hard to deal with and it's a process for sure. Also, the process is completely in Japanese, so highly recommend getting help if you need it for that. An alternative for having wired internet connection is having pocket Wi-Fi instead. This is a little more easier to procure as a lot of foreigners actually do get pocket Wi-Fi as well, so they don't have to use data during their trips. I would think that it is a tad bit more expensive to use pocket Wi-Fi just because of the availability as well as being able to bring it with you wherever you go. And finally, if you are working, there are some things that you need. First, you're gonna need a Japanese bank account. Once again, they don't make this process easy. There's usually no English support, and there are some banks that cater specifically to gaikokujin or expats, but the process is still pretty difficult, I believe. I personally never had to get a Japanese bank account. Um, I knew I wasn't going to be working in Japan, or at least I thought I wasn't, so I just never ended up having to do that step. If you have enough personal savings in your bank account, all you need to do is go to 7-Eleven, find one of their ATM machines, and you can withdraw money straight from your debit card. Another thing that you're gonna need is a Japanese phone number. Just from the stories that I've heard, it is difficult in order to get a Japanese phone number, and the bank account and the phone number you'll need to cancel once you end up leaving Japan. However, for a lot of things in Japan, they do need a point of contact, and that's usually a Japanese phone number. Now, I know this is a beginner's guide, and I've gone through a lot of information with you guys. It sounds like a process, and that's because it is. They don't make it easy, and especially if you're a foreigner, how are you supposed to know all this stuff? in the first place. I even think Japanese people have a bit of trouble navigating the system. They're just more used to it because they've had to live with it and do it their entire lives. If you have any more specific questions about my experiences or about the process itself, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to answer any questions that you have about moving to Japan, maybe the reason why I moved to Japan, the language school system, or just, you know, trying to register your address, which was a pretty daunting task, but it's very worthwhile once you get it all done. And if you like videos like this or about Japan, make sure to leave a like on this video, and I will see you next time. Peace.